right, guys. So we got our pole here. Or uh, it will become a frog gig here shortly. You want it about this tall, so like stand next to it and raise your hand above it. And if it's about that that height, then you're good. Thickness wise, um, I don't know, probably about gripping. Yeah, width. you can grip it real easy. Um, but you don't want it so thin to where your fingers will wrap back around into your palm. You want it to where your fingertips will meet into your palm at the. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like that. Um, obviously, one end is going to be shorter than the other. I mean, not shorter, uh, skinnier. This side will be thicker. Um, that's important for a step that's about to happen. Uh, but first, let's clean up all the little knots and stuff so we don't. Because it's going to be like a spear, so you're going to want to throw it. You don't want to like nick your hand or something when you're throwing it. So let's get to that. Alright guys, so now that we have cleaned up the knots, it is time to split one end, the fatter end, not the skinny end, the fat end. That makes sense to the end. But anyways, so you lay it flat and about you want to split it about about this width. So what is that? take your thumb, take your thumb and your pinky, spread that as far as you can. What if I don't have a pinky? So about probably about right there. So that that's how much you're gonna want it to split. So then you take your knife, put it on the end, make sure it's right in the middle. So it's gonna split it straight down the middle. Make sure it's lined up right. Take your baton. So then you take the knife out, and let it split all the way through. Then you rotate it, and you're going to make a cross so that the lines will meet into four separate quadrants. There'll be four segments on this end when you look at it. It'll be like a plus sign. Alright, then take your cord of your choice. It can be bank line, it can be paracord. It could be shoestring. Shoestring. You need a lot though. You need quite a bit. But um, even jute twine if you want to. You can make natural cordage, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use bank line. Make it about that four. Alright, so now that you've wrapped it, you want to wrap it down probably about two inches, maybe even two and a half inches. Um, anyway, so once you get that, then you're going to want to get two sticks that are about two and a half, three inches long. Um, and the thickness of these need to be about like a pencil, probably about a pencil thickness. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these two and you're going to wedge them down the cracks. So you're going to have one. have one that goes down like that and the other one's going to go like that so it's going to split the four sections okay so let's do that real quick you may have to um, spread it out to get it started Okay, 
Von Hammer. The purpose is you want it to get slide down to like about right here to this point. Okay. So now that you got them all pegged down, um, by the way, you should be like really patient with this step because these little pegs are skinny. They're gonna wanna break under the pressure of this of the wood, wanting to go back to normal, which is together. They don't. It doesn't. It's not meant to be spread apart like that. So just be careful. Baby taps, and it'll be good. And you're not gonna push it all the way down to your uh, bank line either. You're just gonna push it down. Your spikes are going to be about two, two and a half inches long, so take that for however you want. Anyways, so then you get your bank line, right? And you tie it underneath, right underneath all the spikes. And then, once you have it, you're going to weave in and out, like, or up and below each one. You're going to go past, go around it three times, according to this other video that I watched. So I didn't come up with this design, but... It works pretty good. So you go around it about three times. Doesn't really matter exactly how many. And then you just go around the same one you just went over and go back doing the opposite pattern of what you just did. Does that make sense? No. Thanks, Anderson, for your input. I appreciate it. I'll be here all week. So then, once you get all that, Tie it off at the bottom like you do, so you just wrap it around a couple times and tie it off. I'll show you what it looks like. Well, so now you sharpen it. I've gotten one out of the four done. Anderson's already finished his. It's Anderson. See if you can see this. Mine's okay. It kind of broke earlier, but uh, it's not as fancy as Braxton's. It's just got one of those little uh, knots around it. Kind of shabby little spikes. Alright guys, so I got mine done. Same. So, as you can see, hopefully they work. Hey, hey now. Be careful. Hey, I, don't don't I, don't, I don't like to sword fight with other guys, sorry. I mean spear fight, whatever you want to call it. A gig fight. So anyways, we got these suckers. Hopefully, we can catch some frogs in this pond right behind us. We spent all day weed whacking. Yeah, there's two ponds actually, but if you're really, if we're really quiet, we can actually hear them. That was a frog. That was a frog. That was a frog. You get the point. There's a lot of frogs over there. Plus, we've seen them like crazy amounts. Like, so I don't know how big they're gonna be, but we're gonna gig some frogs and attempt cooking their legs because I've never had frog before have you yep really when I was down in Florida how was it it was okay it's kind of chewy but it doesn't really uh I mean what does alligator taste like yeah I get what you're saying but anyway the whole point of this is to make a survival tool to help you survive so 
This is episode two of the survival arsenal. The frog gigger. Let's see if it actually works. Braxton, you want to tell the people what we're doing out here? We are attempting frog digging. This is our first attempt ever, so uh, I don't know how this is going to go. We might not catch anything, but hey, at least we're out here and we're going to have a fun time doing it. So, yeah. There's a cabin back there. We ain't too far from it. If you can hear them, I don't know if you can hear them, but they're, they're croaking for sure. And what I've read is that you're supposed to spotlight them, and then they, they act like a deer in headlights where they just stay there. So if one person, like, you hear that? So if you just spotlight it, then you see their eyes, one person holds the camera, not the camera, the, the flashlight, while the other person goes up and spears it. That's a big one. On you. Oh, I see him now. Huh? I see him now. Uh, that one went away. Ready? Get him. Oh. Uh, I turn the camera off for five seconds and something marvelous happens. Stick, stick. We were just about to give up too. Finally got one. It looks like it works. I, I'm pretty sure this thing's dead too. Even though I didn't like pierce it anywhere, I just I, maybe I squished it when I stuck it up in there. But I, I was gonna say, bro, you messed that thing up. <laughs> but hey, the legs are spared. I mean, they're small legs, but you could eat them if you were hungry. And I think, and like I said before, we're not just gonna waste it, no matter. We're not just gonna kill something for no reason. So we're gonna we're gonna cook them, even though they're small as I'll get at. But I mean, I'm gonna cook them. Anderson's gonna cook them. So there we go. Cool. Sweet. Boom.